Shalom to the Lord's elect. This is another edition of the Daily Edification, the Daily Exhortation, and it comes to you through the spirit and power of Yahweh Baal Shem, Yahweh Shai Baal Shem, Rakakwadash. All praises and glory is due. I'm going to call this video The Elect Are the First Fruits. The Elect Are the First Fruits. And uh, of course, I'm going to go into the term first fruits and um, its relation to um, the Heavenly Father. Uh, when you go into the Holy Scriptures, now this video, the inspiration of this video uh, came from a statement I made at camp yesterday. <laughs> and um, right then, then I realized that... Uh, Another title for the elect or the chosen is the first fruits. You know, they are indeed the first fruits of the Heavenly Father. And what do I mean by first fruits? Well, when you go back to the law, you know, when you go back to the law, um, in the book of uh, Exodus, <clears throat> the 13th chapter <coughs> Exodus the 13th chapter let me see if that's if that is indeed the one yep it is Exodus the 13th chapter there's something called the first fruits of the Lord these are the these are the first spirits created now the use of the word fruit is a metaphor for people in in this in this sense okay in this sense of the scripture it's a metaphor for people all right uh spirits created if you will and there's always a first like let me give you an example yahweh shai is the first spirit created of all spirits in other words all the spirits that the heavenly father created and i'm talking about not just the nation of israel but all the nations, period. People in general, which people are nothing but spirits. We're nothing but spirits and bodies, right? Well, there had to be a first. There had to be a very first spirit created. And guess who that is? That's Yahweh Shai. Not only he is he the first spirit of the nation of Israel, of the spirits of Israel, he's the first spirit, period. Okay? And that's why he gets everything. That's one of the reasons why he gets everything. That's uh, one of the reasons why he has that title, the only begotten son of the heavenly father. He's the first spirit created. Now, the Lord's people are the Israelites, okay, according to the Holy Scriptures. <coughs> and Yahweh Shai is the first spirit created of the spirits of the Israelites. Well, guess what? You got families in Israel, and each family has the first spirits created. Okay, the first spirits created of that family which generated the family line well all those spirits they belong unto the heavenly father and a name for them is the first fruits okay so that's one of the reasons why they have this truth and we're going to explore that in this lesson all right um here we are in this, um exodus 13 and 1 it says and the lord spake unto moses saying sanctify unto me all the firstborn now another title for firstborn is the first fruits okay now i look at the word sanctify how are they sanctified let's get the book of uh let's get the book of um <clears throat> john the 17th chapter <clears throat> John the 17th chapter <clears throat> and the 17th verse it says sanctify them through thy truth thy word is truth so that's how they're sanctified which is the, through the truth okay now another word for sanctified is to purify and it's the truth that purifies us purifies us from what from the nonsense of this world from the lies of this world. It purifies us from the lies of this world. This truth. 
Now I'm going to look up this word uh, sanctified or sanctify in the Greek. See what it says there. We always got to look up our, our words in the Hebrew, the Greek, the Latin, you know, the Spanish, Italian, French. Why do we do that? To give us a broader, a broader understanding. That's why we do it. Strong's G37, Hagiadzo. Hagiadzo. So the Greek word for sanctify is Hagiadzo, right? And it means to render or acknowledge or to be venerable or hollow. Hollow, another word for hollow is to be uh, uh, cleansed. All right, to separate from profane things and dedicate to the Most High. <clears throat> Consecrate things to the Most High. Dedicate people to the Most High. And how does that happen? Through the truth. In other words, that's one sign that we're dedicated to the Heavenly Father. We have the truth. And we have the pure truth. Okay? To purify, there you go, to purify, to cleanse externally, to purify by exp expiation, and one can look up that word, put it on the comment board, the definition of that word, free from the guilt of sin, there you go, purified, to purify internally by renewing of the soul, oh, that's, that's, oh, that's deep, man, that's heavy, to purify it in, internally by renewing of the soul, okay? And that's where you get the term born again from, by the way. Born again. So sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth, right? Now right, let's get another one. Let's get the book of, uh, this is one of my favorites, Psalm 119 and 9. <clears throat> Psalm 119 and 9, which explains about the process of sanctified or sanctification. See, we're being sanctified right now. Those of us that's been called and hopefully chosen in this truth. See, right now we've been called to this truth. All of us, we've been called. Now when those chariots come and whoever they take up out of here Whoever is delivered, they have been chosen. And we hope that's us, okay? See, but right now we've been called. So thus starts the sanctification process, all right? Psalm 119 and 9, it says, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word? So it all goes back to the word. The word purifies us. Let's get another scripture. <clears throat> Back in the New Testament, John the 15th chapter, the third verse. Now this is what Yahweh Shai said to his disciples, which became apostles, right? And it started with them, right? They were part of what? This first fruits that the scriptures speak about. John 15 and 3, now ye are clean, through the word which I have spoken unto you. So it's unanimous. All those precepts that I pulled out, it's unanimous that it is the word that purifies us, that cleanses us. Right? So let's get back to let's get back to the law. Now you understand what this means. Sanctify unto me all the firstborn. What does that mean essentially? It means the Heavenly Father is going to give the firstborn. Another title for them is the first fruits. He's going to give them the truth, which is going to purify them. Which is going to set the stage for them to be what? Saved, delivered. And when I say saved, what am I talking about? Because you got these wacky-tacky Christians. They haven't got a clue what the, what the term being saved means. When you ask them to explain it, <clears throat> they can't do it. Because they don't understand what that term means. And the reason why they don't understand is because the Holy Spirit is not dealing with them. For you to understand these scriptures, for you to understand these scriptures, you have to have the Holy Spirit working with you, working on your mind. Okay? 
That's what gives us the understanding, the Holy Spirit. That's, that's the engine that gives us the understanding of this word, the Holy Spirit. And it's not given to everybody. Okay, it's only given to the firstborn. It's only given to the elect. Okay, that's why I'm going through this lesson. That's the benefit of being part of that elect, of being part of the firstborn. And by the way, we didn't do anything to become part of that ilk, all right, that group. The firstborn, the first spirits. It goes back to the Heavenly Father who chose, who chose a certain group of spirits that he created to be the firstborn, okay, to be the first fruits. That goes back to the Heavenly Father. We had nothing to do with that. Okay? And that's why the Apostle Paul said that this, this, this thing of ours is not of works, lest any man should boast. No. It's of who the Heavenly Father have chosen. Okay? And he's and what I'm showing you in this lesson is he has he has chosen the first fruits, the first spirits that he created. He chose them to have the truth. Sanctify takes us back to what I'm reading here. Exodus 13 and 2, sanctify unto me all the firstborn. We just looked up the term sanctify and what that means. Mean give them the truth. They're the firstborn. They're the first spirits. Another title for them, by the way, brothers, is the aristocrat. Now, do you know what the word aristocrat means? Literally, when you break it down, aristocrat, arist means best, and crat means rule. They're the best to rule. They're the first fruits. What's a perfect example of that? Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai is the ultimate aristocrat. Okay, he's the best to rule. All right, so sanctify unto me all the firstborn whatsoever openeth the womb among the children of Israel, which the sons of Israel, that's what it says in the Hebrew, by the way, sons of Israel. The sons of Israel are the Lord's chosen people. But out of the chosen people, there's a chosen elect. <laughs> all right, so it's like a wheel within a wheel, all right? You got the wheel of the chosen people, the Israelites, but within that wheel, there's another wheel, the chosen elect. They're the first, first fruits created, the first spirits created. Okay? <laughs> Whatsoever openeth the womb among the children of Israel, both of man and of beast, it is mine. What does that mean, it is mine? Meaning the Heavenly Father is going to give them the truth. He's going to show them the mysteries of... Uh, as a matter of fact, he made them what? He made them prophets. And he's going to show them his mysteries. Okay? A good example is this 144,000. All right? As a matter of fact, uh, let me get to two scriptures. Let's go to Amos. When he said, it is mine, meaning he's going to show them his secret. Since they are his, right? He's going to show them his secret. Here it is right here, Amos 3 and 7. Surely the Lord power will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret, meaning his truth, unto his servants, the prophets. Now, what's another title for his servants, the prophets? The first fruits, the firstborn, okay? I.e., your 144,000. Now, we know there's going to be more than 144,000 saved because the scriptures speak about the one-third Okay, one third of the nation of Israel. But the core members of the one third is the 144,000. Okay, they're the first fruits created. How do I know this? Well, let's go to the book of Revelation. And I brought the scripture out yesterday <coughs> at the camp. For those of you that watched the live feed. And it was there and then that this understanding hit me really hard. And I said, you know what? I'm going to do a video on this. And hopefully it will edify you brothers out there. This, this, you see, this thing, of, <laughs> this thing of ours is deep, man. This is, this is no lightweight thing. You know, you know <laughs> when you think about it, you being of your family line, you being the first spirits created, you know what that means? All right, that means that you were chosen to lead off your family, lead off the family, you know, just like Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai was the first spirit created. He led off the family. As a matter of fact, he was the first, uh, for lack of a better term, the first child, if you will, of Joseph and Mary. He was the first, okay? Now, it doesn't always mean that the first child 
in the family is the first fruit, you know. Sometimes the first fruit can come lower down the, the, the order. But it goes back to the spirit, all right? The first spirit created of that family line, okay? And the ben you might say, well, what's the benefit of that? Well, the benefit is what I've been going through. The benefit of that, you being the first fruit or the first spirit of your family line, being a Hebrew Israelite, means you're going to get the truth. You belong, by default, you belong to Yahweh Bar Shem Yahweh Shai, by default. I just read the law. Sanctify unto me all the firstborn. It is mine. Those are heavy words, man. Meaning by default, we're going to get the truth. Revelation 14 and 4. Okay, let's read that. I'm start the first verse, but the point is in the fourth verse. And look, and I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion. Now that lamb is a metaphor for Yahweh Shai. The world ignorantly calls Christ, right? Stood on the Mount Zion. Mount Zion is a, a another title for the nation of Israel. Mount Zion. The word Zion in the Hebrew is to Zion, which 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 means monument. The monument of the Lord. When you build a monument, you build a monument to remember an event or to remember something. So the Lord will always remember his people. He'll never forget them. Those are the Israelites. No matter what we go through as a nation. You know, we've been going from captivity to captivity and the Lord has never forgotten us. Okay? And the proof is that he gave us this word, this understanding. He brought us back to who we are. He brought us back to our nationality. This is proof he has never forgotten us, our true nationality. Anyway, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion, and with him 144,000. Now that's 12,000 from each tribe. Okay? The first spirits created. I firmly believe this, man. These are the first fruits, the first spirits created. Well, it's going to say that. Let me read on. Having his father's name written in their foreheads. That's another benefit. What, what is the Father's name? Yahweh. That's his true name. Written in their foreheads mean they know the true name of the Heavenly Father. And I heard a voice from heaven, and, and I heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters and as the voice of a great thunder. And I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps. And they sung, as it were, a new song before the throne. That new song, the metaphor. The, me the, words, the use of the word song is a metaphor for this truth. Okay, when you go in the book of Ezekiel, uh, what is that, Ezekiel 33, it tells you that this knowledge, this truth is a song. And we're singing it right now. Every, every time we go out and teach, out on the street, preach, every time we do these videos, we are singing that song. Now you see the word new? It's really not new. Okay, when you go in the Greek word for new, it's kainos, which means refreshed. Because we had this song in the past. And we sung it in the past. So once once again, we're singing the song again. Because we have been that song had been taken from us when we went when we went into these different captivities. The last captivity to be underneath the nation of Edom. So now the Lord is re, re, returning us back to this song. That's why it says new. Meaning refresh. Here it is right here. Ezekiel 33 and 31. And they come unto thee as the people cometh. And they sit before thee as my people. And they hear thy words. You know that's our people out there. when we, Especially when we're out in the street teaching. They come up and listen. But they will not do them. Yeah because this is a rebellious nation. The nation of Israel. That's why two thirds are going to be cut off and die. As it is written. Because of their stubbornness. Their rebellion. Against the Heavenly Father, they, they, uh, you know, they refuse to listen to his word, to listen to this truth. But they will not do them. For with their mouth they show much love. Yeah, a bunch of hypocrites. But their heart goeth after their covetousness. And lo, here's the point. And lo, thou art unto them as a very lovely song. That's the same song spoken about in the book of Revelation. Which is this knowledge, this truth. Thou art unto them as a very lovely song of one that have a pleasant voice, yeah, a good singer, 
and can play well on an instrument. And the instrument is what? The instrument is this knowledge, this truth, this Bible, if you will. Okay, that's our instrument. You know, can play well on an instrument. What would, what would an example of that be? We go into all these scriptures. We bring out all these precepts. You know, that brings that song together. And it's a lovely song. Jake like hearing it. But do they do it? Do they get into it? Nope. The majority of them, they just want to be entertained. You know what that means right there? Uh, and lo thou art unto them as a very lovely song of one that have a pleasant voice and can play well on an instrument. What does that mean? That person wants to be entertained. You know, they just want to be entertained. That, and that's the majority of our people. They look at this Hebrew Israelite thing as an, a form of entertainment. They don't see the gravity of it. If they did, they would learn to do it. They would learn to do what, it, what, is, what is being said. They would take it seriously. But they don't. They just want to be entertained. Okay, so they're not taking it seriously. You know when they're going to take it seriously? When all hell breaks loose. And that's pursuant to Hosea 5 and 15. And I'll read that next. Um, so we, we, that's the teachers out there singing this song, right? Pursuant to Revelation. We are as what? We are as one that have a pleasant voice and can play well on an instrument. For they hear thy words, but they do them not. There you go. So what's the what's the point? The point is we are that song. We're singing that song. <clears throat> and when this cometh to pass, Lord will come, then shall they know that a prophet have been among them. See? A prophet. And that takes us back to Revelation. Revelation, the 14th chapter. But before I go back there, let's get the book of Hosea 5 and 15. Because that's when they're going to want to listen to this song, our people. The majority of them. They're going to want to listen to this song when all hell breaks loose. And that's what we've been telling them. As prophets, we've been telling them, look, all hell is getting ready to break loose. It's called the time of Jacob's trouble. When Esau will, will bring this onslaught on our people. Because the, the, the scriptures tell us that this devil, he knows that he has but a short time to, to set up his so-called new world order. And what, the main enemy of his so-called new world order are you Israelites. That's right, you so-called Negroes all the way down to you so-called Mexican. Mexicans. You are the main enemy of this coming New World Order. And Esau wants to do This is Now, this is according to Bible prophecy. Esau wants to do away with you. Okay, so they're going to bring this trouble to you. And we've been warning you. But you, you, you majority of Israelites, you ain't listening, man. You know when you're going to want to listen? Let me read this, Hosea 5 and 15. That's when you're going to want to listen. I will go and return to my place till they acknowledge their offense and seek my face. Now, now you want to listen. And, and part of listening is you're going to acknowledge your offense. You're going to acknowledge, you Israelites out there, you're going to acknowledge that you sinned against the Heavenly Father. You're going to learn what sin is really all about. What sin is a transgression of the law. You're going to learn that the Heavenly Father gave us laws, statutes, and commandments, and they were to be followed. And if you didn't follow the laws, statutes, and commandments, you were creating sin. You're going to learn because you, you, all this stuff, you don't really learn it in these wacky tacky churches. So finally, you're really going to learn about this truth. But it's going to be to no avail for the majority of you because it's going to be too late. Okay? Because by then your affliction will be upon you. Let's read on. I will go and return to my place till they acknowledge their offense and seek my face. In their affliction, they will seek me early. What's the affliction? The time of Jacob's trouble. Martial law, concentration camps, all hell breaking loose, race wars, race riots, pandemics, okay, terrorist attacks, <laughs> all kind of, all kind of chaos that you can imagine. That will be your affliction, and we've been warning you, we've been telling you, but you ain't been listening. Nah, you haven't been listening. In their affliction, they will seek me early. You'll want answers, and a lot of you won't get none. Okay. Because the answers are being given right now. But that's our people, man. It is an old saying, when words can't teach, adversity will. So some serious adversity is coming your way. But anyway, let's get back to the topic. Right? Now, again, let me read Ezekiel 33 and 32. And lo, thou art unto them as a very lovely song 
of one that have a pleasant voice and can play well on an instrument for they hear thy words but they do them not we, we just went into that and when this cometh to pass Lord will come then shall they know that a prophet have been among them so the prophets are singing this song so that takes us back to Revelation 14 see see how the precepts line up that's why King David said through thy precepts I get understand it and they can only line up through the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit have to guide you to go into these precepts and to put them together so you can see the big picture it's just like a jigsaw puzzle each scripture is like a piece when you take the right piece and you put it together you start to see the picture just like a jigsaw puzzle you take the right pieces you put it together you start to see the you start to see the big picture well the bible is the same the same analogy the same the same concept okay revelation 14 and and uh two again and i heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters and as the voice of a great thunder and i heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps and they sung as it were a new song that's this knowledge this truth before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders okay the elders is talking about the 24 elders which are angels that all they do is uh, uh, praise the heavenly father okay for you to understand that you go in the book of revelation the fourth chapter where the apostle john he saw the the dynamics of the the you know the the spirit world you know the setup the heavenly father sitting on his throne you know the angels coming before him and ministering to him yeah the apostle john saw that man he saw that in the vision and that's recorded in revelation the fourth chapter and they sung as it were a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders and no man could learn that song what is the song this knowledge this truth but the hundred and forty and four thousand there you go now why could they learn that song let's read on which were redeemed from the earth and we believe by faith that we are part of that ilk we had great millstone and certain brothers that are in these different israelite groups that are sincere they're part of this group here, this 144,000. But why could they learn this song? That no man could learn the song but them. Why? Let's read on. These are they which were not defiled with women. What does that mean? That means other philosophies. It ain't talking about actual women. This is a metaphor. The use of the word woman or women is a metaphor for other philosophies. Okay? And the brother can put that scripture in the comment board. I don't want to uh, deviate too too much you know i don't want to make this video too long plus we've done videos on this we've explained what this term means we're not to follow with women there's plenty of videos all you have to do is research that's another thing for our people they're lazy they don't want to research they don't want to search it is written a prudent man looketh well to his goings there's plenty of videos where we've explained what this thing means this this verse here means they were not to follow with women anyway let me move on these are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins, that meaning untouched by other philosophies. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. Who's the Lamb? Yahweh Shai. So wherever the truth is, that's where you're going to find those individuals. These, these 144,000, which here's another title for them. Let's read on. These were redeemed from among men, being first fruits unto the most high and to the lamb so that's the point of this whole whole lesson the 144,000 i.e. the elect the chosen another title for them is the first fruits of the heavenly father now we're going to go into this word first fruits in the Greek and get even more understanding and like I said it takes us back to the law wait for this to load up it takes us back to the law of all the spirits the heavenly father created you always have a first okay and they belong to the heavenly father by default they're the first fruits just like when you plant an actual garden the first fruits belong unto the heavenly father and it's no different with people let's look up this term first fruits Okay. 
is Greek. Strong's G, 536. Aparche. Aparche. Okay, you just heard the word. To offer firstlings or first fruits. To take away the first fruits of the productions of the earth. And it's no different with people. Which was offered to the Heavenly Father. Kind of like a sacrifice, if you will. That's one of the reasons why Yahweh Shai sacrificed as a, as a member of the first fruits. The first of the first fruits, that's Yahweh Shai. Did he not sacrifice himself to the Father? Yes, he did. On that cross. See? Yeah. The first portion of the dough. Yeah, like when you make bread, the first portion of the dough would be like your first fruit. Which, which the first portion of the dough, that'd probably be the best bread. Not probably, that'd be the best tasting bread, is the first portion. <coughs> the first portion of the dough from which sacred loaves <laughs> were to be prepared. <laughs> and who does sacred loaves, brothers? We are. Okay? Hence term used of persons consecrated to the Heavenly Father for all time. And that's another thing I'd like you brothers to do. Put the definition of the word consecrated. That's a heavy word. Consecrated. I think it literally means with oil. With oil. Literally. It, the etymology of the word. Okay? Hence term used of persons consecrated to the Heavenly Father for all time. So guess what? Those kind of individuals will never fall out the truth. Never. Hey, if you're a member of the first fruits, right? You're never going to fall out the truth. But the thing is, we don't know. That's why it is written to give our, to give diligence to make our calling and election sure. So if, if we give diligence, right, and we make our calling and election sure, that means we're part of the first fruits. We're part of the first fruits. <coughs> uh, now listen to this. Person superior in excellence. That takes us back to the word aristocrat which aristocrat literally means best rule. The aristocrat are the best to rule, like in Esau's kingdom. Who's the aristocrat in es Esau's kingdom? The top elites, the top banking families, the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, those bastards over there in, uh, 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 um, in uh, Windsor Castle, over there in England. The so-called queen mum and her husband. They're the aristocrat. They're the best to rule. They're the top of their line. The top Edomites, if you will. Right? Well, guess what? Among the nation of Israel, we have the same thing. Even though we're on the bottom. Okay? Very soon, the Heavenly Father is going to turn, turn this thing around. Okay? We're going to be living like gods on the planet Earth. Okay? Persons superior in excellence to others of the same class. How you get around that? That's the benefit of being a first fruit. Okay? To offer firstlings or first fruits. Pretty much says the same thing we read. What does this say here? The first fruits of the productions of the earth, both those in a natural st uh, state and those prepared for use by hand, which were offered to the Heavenly Father. Again, is it not written to offer? As a matter of fact, let me get that real quick since it came to mind. Brothers, it is written that we offer, what is that, Romans, the 12th chapter? And as mem members of the first fruits, that's exactly what we're going to do, brothers. We're going to do what I'm about to read here. Romans, the 12th chapter, the first verse. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of the Heavenly Father, which have been shown to us, right, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice. So as members of the first fruits, we're commanded to, to give our bodies as a living sacrifice. Just like Yahweh Shai did, right? When he, when he went on the cross. But how do we do it? How do we give our bodies as a living sacrifice? Well, we give up our time. We totally dedicate, dedicate, not delicate, dedic dedicate our life to this truth. This is all we think about. This is all we meditate on. As a member of the first fruits, that's exactly what we're going to do. Okay, so you see it goes deeper than just coming into this truth. You see why you're so turned on by this truth. You see why you, you're so 
uh, turned on by it. That why you always get into it. Why? Because you're a member of the first fruits. <laughs> Which by default, you are given to the Heavenly Father anyway. Remember the law. I just read the law earlier. Right? Whatsoever open of the womb out of the nation of Israel, it is mine. Okay? So, as you can see, brothers, you can clearly see it's not according to works. Just like the Apostle Paul said. This thing of ours is not according to works. It's according to who is part of that group known as the first fruits, the firstborn. Anyway, let's get back to scripture again. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of the Heavenly Father, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto the Most High, as the first fruits, which is your reasonable service, which is your reasonable service reasonable service as a member of the first fruits it's our reasonable service to sacrifice ourselves unto the heavenly father because we belong unto him anyway i mean all the israelites belong unto him but they are different levels they are different classes and the first fruits is the top of the line they're the top class I, we just read it okay we just read it let's get back to the greek again apache right the first fruits the Greek word is apache, right? And we just read the definition. There you go. Apache. Strong's G, 536. Aparche. Aparche. The, the number three down here. Person superior in excellence to others of same of the same class. Now, how deep is that? And this and that right there shows you that not every Israelite is on the same level. Not every Israelite is on the same level. The first fruits are higher than the other Israelites. The first spirit created. The first of the first fruits is Yahweh Shai. Okay. All right, so I believe I've said enough. Okay, as a matter of fact, whoa, before I go, check this out. Under Strong's definitions, a beginning of sacrifice. And, and, and isn't that what this truth is all about, sacrifice? Well, we are, we've, we've been appointed to, brothers. We're members of the first fruits. <laughs> and the first fruits are always sacrificed. Look at Yahweh Shai. Okay. All right. So with that, basically, uh, hopefully you were edified by this uh, lesson and, uh, you know, it's on to the next one. Shalom for now. Hopefully you were uh, really learned something from this lesson, man. The first fruits are definitely, you know, the first fruits are definitely, um, you know, the, the chosen of the Heavenly Father. And that's another title for the elect, the first fruits. <laughs>